One of the saddest days of my life was when my mother told me Superman did not exist. I was a, a, a comic book reader, and I read comic books, and I just loved them, because even in the depths of the ghetto, you just thought, he's coming, I just don't know when, because he always shows up and he saves all the good people and they never end up. I was reading, I don't know, maybe I was in the fourth grade. My mother, I was like, you know, Mom, you think Superman's up shit? Superman is not real. I was like, he's not? What do you mean he's not? No, he's not real. And she thought I was crying because it's like Santa Claus is not real. And I was crying because there was no one coming with enough power to save us. Kids look at the world and they make certain uh, predictions based on the uh, evidence they're receiving from their peers, from their parents, and from their teachers. From their perspective, the world is a heartless, cold-blooded place because they realize they've been given the short end of the stick and they don't know why. Black Tree, honored to have Mr. Jeffrey Candle, president of Harlem Children's Zone. I know you've been making your rounds, you've been Charlie Rose, Oprah, so it's an honor for you to be right here on Black Tree TV. Well, I'm thrilled to be here on Black Tree and, uh, you know, uh, we want to bring this message directly to communities that are the most impacted by this issue. And we need uh, all of you all in the media uh, to really focus on uh, this issue of what's happening to our children across this country because it is happening from one end of America to the other. Certain kids are being left behind uh, in communities that I think we all know about. So it's not LA, it's not Detroit, it's not Milwaukee, uh, it's not Newark. It's all of those places and then a thousand places people have never heard of. And we've got to do something about that. One fact in the film that really uh, troubled me was to, to learn that, that this generation is going to be less literate than the previous generation. Like, what what do you what are some of the things that parents at home can do? I know you say that that, that your job is still goes on whether the parent does it or not. Yeah. But just for the parents that are trying that just don't know what to what to do with their kids, what are some of the, the things that they could do to help foster a better learning environment? Well, one one of the things we think is that you know we've got to get our kids reading and we've got to get them writing. Uh, and parents, uh, you need to encourage your children every single day. And it doesn't, you know, a lot of times people are nagging and do their homework like it's a chore. Reading should be fun. Read with them. Get a good book and spend some time making sure this child understands that this is what you value. Uh, if you look at our kids, uh, a lot of times people value what they wear. And you see our kids, some of the best dressed kids in America. And, 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 people, and kids get that. They say, well, people think I'm somebody if I dress well. But well, we need our kids to think you're somebody if you're well read, if you're well spoken, if you can write a decent paragraph. And of course, parents, those of us in the community, all of us have to go to our kids uh, and not look at what they look like on the outside, but see what's going on in the inside and just some encouraging words. Just, you know what, uh, find a book to read. It doesn't matter what it is. I don't care if it's a comic book, I don't care if it's the funny, just read every day because uh, that skill will grow stronger as well as all the rest of the muscles you're using. If you use that brain, it will get stronger every day. Now, you know, it's, a, it's election season coming up. And Maybe some of the topics that need to be pushed to the forefront is, is, is education. I know there's been a lot of cuts in the budget you know, for, for, for education. What do you think the administration could do to, to help support uh, getting better teachers and, and, and giving more incentives for teachers to, to come and support these children? What do you think, what are some of the things that, that, if, that if you had you know, the, the administration's ear right now that you would tell them to, to implement? Well, I think that President Obama has done exactly the right thing, him and Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan, and race to the top. Uh, they put about $4 billion, and they said to states, uh, if you want this money, you're going to have to change. Uh, and states are, have begun to change across America. Uh, and I think it's, you know, this is a crisis, but it's also an opportunity. Uh, this is a time we can sit down and say, what can we do different? Uh, and are we prepared to change uh, if it's going to mean support? And I think that if I was uh, the governor of um, this state or any other state, I would get me my own race to the top dollars and say to school districts, those of you that come up with real creative solutions to these problems, we're going to invest in you more so uh, than we will in places that have not. Because there's not right now, everybody's going to be cut, but we should be pushing 
education, innovation, and rewarding people who demonstrate that they can be successful with these very challenging populations. Last question. I, I know that you took the Harlem Ch Children's Zone from from a 24 block radius to. I mean, last I heard it was like 97, 97 blocks. blocks. Uh, how could I mean? Is is this a program that could be replicated in other cities? And and is, has there been any process to kind of franchise the organization in a way that other cities could kind of do the same thing? Well, President Obama has created something he's called Promise Neighborhoods. I think there's going to be an announcement tomorrow of the 20 uh, cities uh, that are going to be in the planning process and they're going to get money to plan so they can replicate our work. Uh, what, we, what I want to say to people is that yes, we're working with 97 blocks, but we started this with one block. And this is not, you know, sometimes people look at the problem, they get so overwhelmed that they forget you can take action. To do one block, you don't need a thousand people. You can get five or six people and decide we're going to fix this block, we're going to make it a better block for our children. So we think you start with one block and then you go and you build from there. Uh, and we think the president is supporting these efforts around the country. Well, I thank you for your time, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. Appreciate it.